Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek with the LandGeek.com. And today, really excited because he's back from Toronto. He seems rested. He seems motivated. I know he's probably a little wealthier than when he left. Duran Frazier from ReserveLand.com. Should I list off all your other domains? No, please don't. LandHub.com. That's the only one that you focused on at this point in time. I'm, LandHub.com. I, I'm going to make millions of dollars with Minerals.com. <laughs> I haven't bought that domain yet. Wait. Um, hey, Mark. How you doing, bud? Good, good to hear your voice. It's been a couple, two, three weeks. I've been in and out of Canada. Yeah, and, and look, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not ashamed to admit it. I missed you. You know, I, I, you know, I'll tell you a real quick, funny story. So I'm, I'm walking through uh, the, the U.S. Customs going through Canada, and, and in Toronto, the Customs is actually on, uh, on the Canada side. So you don't do it, you don't do it when you come in to, to San Diego. There, you just do it in Toronto. So I go through, and I'm at the last guy. So you go through, you do all your stuff, you put your passport in, you put your thumbprint, whatever you do, all the stuff you do. You get the nice person stamps your book, and then you walk through. And there's one guy left to, to go in. And the guy looks at me and he stops and, and, he, and he goes, just yells at me, he goes, read number 15. Read I, number 15? Yeah, he's, he shows me this form. I said, and it didn't, it just, it didn't, it didn't have any pertinence to what, to what him and I were, like what I was doing. And I was like, and I read it to him and he goes, oh, I'm sorry, read number 14. Like really angry U.S. customs. customs. Wait, 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 you're, you're telling me somebody in Canada was being rude to you? No, no, this is an American guy. Oh, that, okay. That makes more sense because yeah, Canadians are, are yeah, Canadians, unbelievably I, polite. Very, very, very uh, disrespectful guy. Something like, okay, and I'm in, I'm in a suit. I just got done four days of a trade show. I want to, I, I just want to lay down and, and just prepare for my flight. And the guy goes, what, what do you, what do you, what do you got in there? And, and it was, it was our trade show booth. And I said, okay, you know, we're, t I'm taking it back. Did you, did you bring it with you here? I said, yeah. He goes, well, you, you missed a box, like just very angry. So anyways, he sends me to secondary inspection and secondary is pretty much, I thought I was in jail. So I go to secondary. You thought you were in jail? Dude, it was scary. I go in and the door's closed. You can't use your cell phone. You can't do anything. You have to sit in this room and you have to wait till they call your name. So I go back in there. I'm, I'm, I think I, there's one other person in there at the time. There's like 10 agents and they're not doing anything except they're on their computers going back and forth. So, so after like 15 minutes, I said, Hey, is anybody, is anybody going to help me? And they said, no, uh, you know, that person basically got to lunch. She'll be back in like 20 minutes. I'm like thinking to myself, are you serious? I'm going to be in here for at least an hour. Right. So, so anyways, 20 minutes goes by, 40 minutes goes by. I'm on an hour and everybody that came in after me is gone. Like they've already gone out. So I'm the only guy left in there. And I looked up at a guy and said, Hey, what's going on? Am I, am I going to go? And they're like, yeah, everybody else was a different issue. You're you're a different situation, and I'm like, my heart sank. I'm like, the guy yelled at me for using my cell phone. I could, I mean, literally, I couldn't do anything. I had to sit there. And I I literally was in jail, like right. I was being detained. And I said, what, what have I done? And so finally, the guy walks up, and goes, "What you got?" I said, "Treasure booth." And he goes, "Okay, you can go." I'm thinking to myself, dude, are you freaking serious? Like here I am, like a, you know, tax paying citizen totally disrespected by like 10 U S customs agents. Wow. So I'm going, you know what, what a bummer. So I, but I actually, my, my, my and there was a frog in my throat for like 20 minutes. I thought that, did I do something wrong? Did I, you know, what did I just kind of check the box for going to jail? You know? And I was just like, Oh man, I was just, I was devastated. So it was pretty, pretty funny story, but I thought I wasn't going to get home. And, uh, and That's when you crazy and you can use your cell phone, you can call nope. Lauren. Couldn't get out. I couldn't leave the, the I couldn't leave the premises. So it was Weird. like, yeah, it was really weird. So, anyway, I just uh, I thought that was pretty funny. That was part, but the only the only uh, very interesting story I have from Canada, other than the fact that you know business was well, we went, went well over there, and we were pushing forward with our mining project. But um, so uh, it was a great time. Weather was freezing, but uh, thank thank you Lord that we were right next to the convention center, so it was like a five minute walk. Um, but your your face is literally frozen in like three minutes when you walk outside. 
Uh, really? it was pretty cold. So. What, what was the temperature? I think Fahrenheit was right at about, I want to say like six, five, five degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Um, so in Canada, whatever that is, like negative 10, 15 um, Celsius. So what's, was, what's uh, San Diego like today? I, I, I like 75. So I'm be like 85 at the beach. <laughs> you yeah, poor guy. Weather's not bad here. Weather's not bad here. So all right. So what are we talking about today? You want to talk about your your life end goal? Yeah, I think um, you know one one of the things I find is very interesting is is people people have so many really interesting business ideas or strategies, right? Like, hey, I've got this cool concept I want to take to market. Um, but but I find a lot of people that that come up with strategies or ideas never really think about the exit or like what do I really want to do in this business? Do I want to go to China every other month and build this product? Do I want to go? Do I want to just sell it and make a little, little bit of money so that I don't have any liability involved? Like what what is the end game? And it and and we're not just talking about land here. We're talking life in general, right? Like we we diversify portfolio so that eventually um, we can retire. Well. Right. Right. You know, depending on the market situations and, and, you know, my mom's a great example. Um, you know, she's bust her butt for a long time. She's got some retirement money, um, but she lost some money in the market, you know, when it went down and never really recovered. And I always love people that go, well, if you just left in the market after the crash, you'd be up today. And I'm like, oh, great. Because, you know, like I knew that was going to happen right. when my portfolio lost 80%. Um, so, you know, there's the, the dynamic of, of really assessing you, you know what the what your end game is or what your exit strategy is you know in life with a business idea um i, I always tell people it's it's important to sort of like understand where you're going to go and what you're going to do so if you want to be a guy that sells land is that your is your goal to basically have a passive income when you're 65 and and you know make a little bit of money or is your goal to go and and close five million dollar deals where you make a million bucks you know, and it's right. always good to sort of understand and assess that. Like for me, when I started buying and selling land, I, I was 20, what was I, 20 or 21. And I just remember going, gosh, this is so, it was just cool, right? For me at 21, it was just cool to take a little bit of money and make more with it. Right. Um, I didn't have, and we've talked about it before, I didn't really have an end strategy or an end goal. And it's, it was a detriment to both you and I, because had we sort of structured um, sort of what we, where we wanted to be in five years from now. Well, we, we didn't have a mentor. You're right. You're that, right. That was a big problem. It, we, it, we, had, we had nobody guiding us and helping us. Nobody. Nobody. And that, and that you know, and you, we were both young. I mean, you know, what, what are you now? 50? I mean, you look great for 50, by the way. Thank How you. Are? Thank you. 42. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel you know, 50. Yeah. You know, we're like five years uh, different. So when I was like 26, 27, you were, you know, you were early 30s. And, uh, and you know, it's funny enough, if we had a mentor, if we knew, but there was just, because we were sort of creating a niche, it was like a pi you know, we were pioneering this whole concept of buying and selling land. There was really no mentor, but we still could have had a business mentor to give us sort of a, a you know, a, a direction or a strategy. Right. Well, you know, I, I'd been working in a job I hated for years and this was like, oh my gosh, this is a way out. Yeah. And so for me, I'm like, oh, this is it. Like. I found my my way out, and then I didn't really think about anything past that. It was like, okay, I I achieved my goal. Now what? And if, you know, you remember we didn't do anything with terms. We never owner financed, which was a huge mistake. Well, it was a mistake. The reason why we didn't do it, Mark, is because we said had such a, such high overhead. So Mark and I were both paying off multi million dollar notes. Um, with nine, with, you know, 9% tacked on the back end, uh, you know, interest wise. So yeah, that's true, but we could have diversified into other, other stuff. Cause we were making so much cash on a monthly basis. Yeah. We could have been buying and buying property left and right that we could have been owner financing. I, because, you I, know, that's what I, I was, I, I, that's what I was doing. I agree. And I, and, and both of us, you and I both did, did that and tried that, you know, we both, we both took down some contracts along the way, but yeah, you're, you're right. We probably should have gone the direction and we both have a, a, a pretty close friend that yeah. did go that direction and he's doing very well. I mean, I think, really? Yeah. I mean, unbelievable. Yeah. So, and you know, when you, when you, when you got, when you, when you know someone well who came in after we did and, and is making, you know, 30 to 40,000, maybe 50,000 a month passively. Passively. He was up at, he was up to 80 yeah. at one point. Yeah. So, so that, that is a, you know, that's one of those directions where, you know, you, you go, you know, gosh, I, I'm bummed I didn't head that way. But but uh, 
but again, hindsight's twenty twenty. You learn, um, and and so it's always one of those things. That I tell people now, you know, I'm I met with a guy yesterday. Had a really cool product. Um, you know, he wanted to, a friend of mine wanted to introduce me to him. He flew out from Austin, Texas, and or Dallas, and he had this really cool product. And he was a very egotistical, arrogant guy. Right. And and I tried to explain it to him. I'm like, look, you you got to have a goal. You got to have an end game. You got You can't. You you have you have something that's really cool. You've got a provisional patent in place, and 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 you know once once you're granted your patent, what do you want to do? Do you want to license the product? Do you want to? Do you, you actually want to create your own product line? What do you want to do? And and he was like, well, we can do a little bit of both, and I want to play these guys against these guys. I said, no, that's not how you approach it. You gotta you gotta really think about it and right. you know, strategize. And I think the problem with with us in general is that we're torn, right? We're torn by marketing, right? Like market here, market there, do this, do that, like, you know, buy this, buy that, you know, generally it's by thing, things that we don't need. Um, and so now, you know, it, 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 it's even harder for people that come up with ideas and concepts to go, do I, do I pay a thousand bucks to go to this conference? Am I going to learn anything from it? Or do I spend that same money marketing this doing it? So it's, it's a lot harder. And especially in the digital era to really sort of put, put, you know, put a strategy around your concept or where you want to be in, you know, three or five or 10 years from now. And and the other thing thing that's limiting is that we don't know where our government's going to be 10 years from now. Right. Like, I know, I I know. I I mentioned that in the last podcast that I didn't want to talk about the government with you. Oh, I love, why? Why? You know why we're not, we're not getting into it. Let's get into it. I don't want to get into it. It's not because it's not interesting. It's very interesting. It's first of all, we don't know. You know, the thing is, you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen in the economy. I was mentioning to Jeff last time. You you didn't like this administration. You you thought the macro economy was due for a dip, right? Yeah. yeah. That's that's all I said. And and and, and in but, reality, but I want to stay, I want to stay on like, top. Not that I don't like the current administration. It's that I don't like any at this point in time any administration. So I know. and it's not and it's not and it's not uh, you know negative saying that you know they've done a horrible job. It's just saying I think there's a lot of um, entitled people running our country and entitled people and congressmen and senators that run our country that are that have that don't understand discipline their own discipline you know self discipline and and are in it for themselves and not for the people. Right. Um, oh, and by by the way, speaking of that, are you watching House of Cards? I don't. Watch, I don't have time for TV, dude. But that oh sounds. My God. Like, that it's, looks like a great show. It's great. It's great. But no, it's not here, though. Okay, let's get back to the end game. Okay. Do you, do, do you ever so, read that uh, that book, Stephen Covey, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People? I have not. Okay. Well, one of one of them is start with the end in in mind, right? Yeah. So yeah. picture your death. What are people going to say about you at your funeral? You know, where you're your core principles guiding you through life, right? Yeah. And I think it's a very important concept, what you're saying in the sense that, you know, you should have your end goal in mind. So it was it's not just enough for me to say, okay, this is a great business for me to just get out of my job. There needs to be something bigger than that. Some, you know, some value-based stuff as well that, Okay, this is one way that I can achieve what I want to achieve in life. And that's, you know, it's not just having a, my own company, but having this passive income so I'm able to have time to do some other things. You know, be able to, to watch my children grow up, spend yeah. time with them, spend yeah. time with my wife, travel. Yeah. Um, uh-oh. Sorry about that. Is your computer going to blow up? Yeah, my computer starts talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. In 10 seconds, In 10 it will seconds. self-destruct. It's, it's time for me to meditate. <laughs> it's, it's reminding me. So, but you know, but I think it's, I think it's important. Have you, I mean, maybe we talk about having a vision board and goals. Yeah. But, you know, we, and as human beings, this has been studied, we're really bad at looking at really far into the future. Yeah. We're just bad at it. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. You know, one, one of the things I wanted to bring up, Mark, which is very interesting. So I'm doing a bit of hiring right now. Um, I've, I've got obviously several projects going on. Um, I'm, I'm hiring different people for different projects at the moment. And some of these jobs, most of these jobs are for data entry, you know, entry level jobs that are $10 to 13 or 14 bucks an hour. Where are you finding this talent? Uh, well, that's, that, let me get there. Okay. Um, 
I'm not finding his talent. So, um, so I, I put out ads in various places to hire. Right. And I, what's crazy is the, the, the people that are responding to me are not the college kids. Cause I, I believe that most of them think they're pretty entitled and deserve a lot more money. Right. Um, and probably cause they have, you know, 50 grand of student, student loan debt and thinking that, you know, three grand a month, ain't going to chip away at it. Right. Um, and, uh, and then, and then, but then I'm getting a lot of these like 35 to 45 year old people that are, that are like kind of in my age bracket and your age bracket that are, that are, that are a little more maybe desperate for a job and would pretty, you could just kind of almost tell them some of the emails and replies. I always, I always ask for, give me information back when I'm hiring sure. somebody, tell me about yourself. Right. Um, I don't want the, you know, we get emails and it's funny because I'll put an, I'll put an ad somewhere and w- without fail, anytime I put an ad up, I get a, I'll get a response from a guy in Bangladesh that he tells me he'll be my virtual, he'll be my virtual assistant. Right. Uh, but I, it's so interesting because I, I, there's this, there's this really interesting dynamic. It's kind of like shifting where I remember when I was 21 or 22 and all my friends, 10 bucks an hour, 12 bucks an hour, dude, work. I wanted a job for 10, 12 bucks an hour. It'd been awesome. Sure. But now that's not happening. And well, what, what's know, minimum wage right now? I think 10, nine, nine, some change or 10 bucks. Nine change. Is it that high? Yeah. They just raised it. Oh, okay. So, oh, that might, that, you know, no, they just, I think I just raised it. Cause so, I, I know in and out burger always pays higher and they're like 10, 50 an hour. Yeah. yeah. I'll look it up. What's yeah. the minimum wage? So anyway, I just, it's just interesting because as, as we're sort of moving in and as I'm sort of setting my own goals for my business, right. And, uh, you it's know, put it seven, it's seven ninety uh, an hour. Where where you are? Yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's a little higher. I think it's, it's uh, um, in San Diego's a little higher. Let's see real quick. That's um, crazy. Uh, ten dollars an hour. Ten dollars. Uh, okay. So it looks like it. Minimum wage. Maybe hold on. Maybe it's eight. I don't know. It says ten here. Oh no! I think it's just talking about a bill that they're putting into place. Senate Friday of the day. California voted to raise the statement of wage to ten dollars an hour. Um, that's for change. Okay. Anyway, I think that's that's where they're trying to go with it. Anyways, I know it's not a ton of money. It's not something that can you can survive on by any means, but it's a job. Right. And, and you know, and and I always put in there, uh, you know, you know, opportunity. You know, there is further through further opportunity with a job. So, um, anyway, that I just kind of got sidetracked a little bit. But going back to kind of like setting goals and and creating sort of an exit strategy, um, I think it it, it it's very important that we that when we move into certain things in our life and when when you say that too you also you also have to do it like you said like what what are people going to think of me when i die um and you want to be the guy that that tries to scam people out of money and and you know buy some real estate you want to be a guy that people go gosh he was he was an awesome guy he wanted to help people he was successful he was really creative you know there's there's certain things that that uh, you have to look at and and really assess where, where it is you want to be. And look, there there are people that have gone to jail and that have turned their lives around to become really good people. Um, so if you're a bad person and you're trying to change, I mean, look, we can always reassess and then create right. new goals. Um, right. Well, I, I know a lot. I know a lot of people that have a lot of money, but I wouldn't consider them successful. Exactly. You know, they're working sixty hours, seventy hours a week. They're yep. completely stressed out, and they don't get to spend any time doing what they really want to do. And they're just like, they're little hamsters on a wheel. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, to me, success is the three W's working where you want, when you want and with whom you want. And it's def- and it's definitely Mark. I will say it's getting harder to do that. Um, I'll be honest with you. I think that, that, uh, that, and again, go, going back to, it's not our current administration. It's just kind of where America's going. I mean, just with the tax, I mean, you have to solve a debt problem. How do you solve a debt problem? You raise taxes. Well, right. how, do you raise, how do you raise taxes? Sometimes it happens in the wrong places. And, and in this case, a lot of it comes to small businesses. And, and it's like in California, I sat down with somebody from Paychex this morning, uh, you know, my payroll provider. And she started talking about all these different things that I need to do that if I, you know, with OSHA and everything else, my direction, when I have a resource, post, I'm like, to be honest, I don't want to work anymore. I don't, <laughs> I don't even want a job. Like, is yeah. this what a, is this what a business owner has to deal with? And she goes, "Well, it's like it's like buying a new car and, or learning how to drive a new car. It's like I'm like, no, no, no. It's not like learning how to drive a new car. It's like learning how to drive a you know a, a monster semi truck when you're six years old. Right, a jet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like it's not it's not you can't compare it like that. So it's it's it is really hard, and and that's why we have to be even more important. I guess there's a penalty. I just found this out this morning. And, and thank goodness I don't hire too many too many uh, subcontractors. But if you hire a subcontractor, 
Um, there's a bunch, there's like 20 questions that answer whether or not they need to be a, a W2 employee or a 1099. And if they, if they need to be W2, uh, they, uh, and when they're not, you get a fine, I think, of $50,000. The minimum. Mm-hmm. Really? Itself, wow. Like stuff that you and I don't really think about, you know? Right. Not, we have to really think about because you don't hire a ton of people and we, you know, I like I go to companies to hire people out, um, and there's different creative ways to to outsource uh, without having to actually have a subcontractor or call it a subcontractor. But it's just, it, you know, it's it's a challenge. So so starting a new business is challenging. And do you want as a business owner, do you want all the life that comes with it? So that's why again, assessing everything before you you take make a commitment of becoming an entrepreneur or starting a land business, whatever it is, you really gotta you gotta you gotta know what your balance is. Do you want to deal with liability? And with that liability comes risk. With that risk comes potentially more money, but but with less risk, maybe less money, but there's still a chance to be successful. So Right. Right. Well, so, you know, I, I consider what we do more a lifestyle business than an enterprise business. Totally. You know what I mean? So we we could do this out of a Starbucks. Yeah. Any any internet connection. We could do this anywhere in the world as long as we have an internet connection where there's some businesses that you you really need to physically be with those people. Yeah. And that's more of an enterprise business than a lifestyle business. In fact, uh, I had Larry Goins on the podcast uh, last week, and that's, you know, he was kind of alluding to that. He's got a big operation. He's got like 30 employees that are in his physical office. I personally have no interest in in managing that, juggling that, dealing with the overhead of that because it's just not me. It's not my personality. You know, yeah. good, good for him if that's what he wants to do and that's his personality, but it's it's not for me. And, and what I find is that when you have a large overhead like that, it's it reverses. Suddenly you're working for them and they're not yeah. working for you. Yeah, I, I just started a new clothing company called I Hate Employees. And it's, uh, it's become very <laughs> did successful. You, did you really? Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, no, I haven't. But, um, but you know, it's it, funny though, because it, every time I talk to business owners, that's their biggest complaint is their staff. Well, because you, because you're dealing with, if you like, if you have 30 people at your company, you're dealing with 30 different emotions and, right. and, and not, you're not so much managing the business, you're managing emotions. And right. so it's a challenge. That's why you and I have always kind of, you know, I guess, you know, uh, gone to a direction of not, not wanting or, or having employees because we know, like I, you know, I had, I had a personal system for a while. Gosh, I mean, she was great. She was really good at what she did, but all of a sudden she would go on these emotional tangents and I'm like, yeah, I got to fo- focus. I need you to help me focus. I've already right. got those challenge, focus challenges, you know? Yeah, I need yeah, you but we, we've talked about this. I really think you need to get back on that VA bandwagon and just spend, even if you spent an hour a night making your, your standard operating procedure, creating those systems and those files, and then hiring, you know, a couple VAs and yeah. seeing which one works the best, your your life is going to be so much simpler. I almost feel like you don't even spend the time. You're you're so busy, you're not even taking the time to to push it out to somebody else. You're you're right. And what's funny is that that I just again going back to it, I took another chance in India on another virtual another virtual assistant. Right. I got so burned, Mark. No, um, I I know it's it it takes time. Such and a you challenge. Don't, you so, don't want to. But do at it. the same time, I I'm I'm in a different place. So like a lot of listeners will go, well, you know, if you know, I I make a business out of this. Very, you know, my my it's a very side job for me. Right. Um, and when I say that, because I'm working on on other things, right, Land Hub and 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 my 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 mining company. But but for me, I I still have goals within Reserve Land Management and how I can how I can grow the business. Um, and people would say, well, focus on it. Well, I'm, I'm dealing with things that are greater, grander, right? I've got, a, right. I've got a very big mining project that I'm heavily involved with. We're raising some capital. We're drilling this year. And so those are the things that, you know, going that direction to me, like that's kind of where my focus is. So it takes away from, you know, putting processes in place because to put a pro like you do to put a process in place, you got to take time to do it. No, I know. But even if you work, okay, let's say you're working five hours a week right now Yeah. on, on the, on your land business, right? Yeah. You could work a lot more efficiently in those same five hours if you were having a couple VAs doing the due diligence, managing the letter writing campaign, handling the marketing, 
and pushing all that out and where, you know, that hour you might be spending working in the business. Mm-hmm. Now you're just working that hour is just communicating on the business you're, and you're using a software solution. Let's say something like Basecamp and you're, you're, you're managing the projects. Well, exactly. You know, the other, the other funny, you know, side note is that I'm building land hub to solve your problems and mine. Well, no, so, I know, and which I can't wait, but yeah, and yeah, we, I know, we, I know. But here's what's crazy: in the middle, in the middle of me developing this thing, Craigslist changes everything. So I'm I'm almost finished with phase one, and then all of a sudden, Craigslist throws the hammer down, and says, "Sorry, no more HTML and ads." Right. So and no, now now you deal with that 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 challenge. And I we talked about it. That I mean, you probably put they probably put thirty thousand people out of business by doing that. Um, yeah. But but. That's Craigslist. You don't you deal with them. Well, you know, the and that's the problem with platforms. Anytime you rely on a platform, yeah, you're you're at risk. Yeah, they change that platform, then you've got to quickly adapt. So totally. that's that's the problem with it. No, I, I I agree. I agree. So yeah, Mark. I mean, I think uh, you know, I think you you and I like. I think the, the the interesting dynamic between you and I is that you've kind of always been uh, a more of a a strategic goal setter and i've kind of always been like the delusions of grandeur goal setter where like i have these big grand ideas and then i have to sort of you know step back you know kind of put more you know put some processes in place and then move forward which is good because i learned right like gosh you know that was kind of silly the way i thought um uh, how to approach it um and it was more of an emotional approach and i step back and i think about okay this is neat i just learned a lesson by going that direction for two weeks and realized it was a bad decision step back and you know kind of put process in place to take another step forward right no yeah but i i think it's great the way you think i mean you're you're not interested in something that's going to make you 2x 3x no. you want 10x 20x 50x yeah and, where, and I, i'm know. not a, and i'm not opposed to the 2x 3x. you have to have that in your portfolio right I mean, right. that's, that's Which, how you yeah. diversify. And I, and I do have some of those, you know, those things where I, you know, I, I, I whether it's, it's my reserve land or whatever it is. And, 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 and this day and age, like, you know, there are properties that I, that I make two X on, on terms or three X on terms. Right. And that's just the way it is. Right. Well, you know, you know what though, if, if we're really being honest, when you've been working at something 10 years or more, it, you want a new challenge. Yeah. Once you hit that 10 year mark. Yeah. I, I think it, it almost comes to a point where like you, you sort of like, okay, I know this really well. I yeah. want I want a new challenge. Yeah. And, and if you're going to take on a new challenge, you're thinking big about it, which look is great. Yeah. yeah. So, and you both, we both did it, right? You decided that, you know, no, you went, so I got into more of the education end of it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and that's, and that's something that appeals to both of us, right? Because we right. like helping people and teaching people what we know. Uh, you know, we know what, you know, we know what we know works. Uh, and and it's just explaining to others and and uh, you know help help them in their process. So oh, it's um, yeah, it's it's great. And there's there's no better feeling when you get an email from somebody that says, hey, you know, I just got this deal done, and I'm making this amount of money. Thank you so much. I, yeah. that's you know, that's great. That's Agreed. that's why we do it. So speaking of, by the way, uh, everybody save the date, May thirtieth, thirty first. Duran will be there. We're going to be in Vegas. I'll let you guys know. Exactly. Oh, dude, you Where can't do that to me, buddy. You better. You can't just drop it on me right now. On May 30, 31st. I already talked to you about this. Oh, no. Weeks ago. Oh, Save no. the date. We're going to be in Vegas. Okay. The Land Geek Seminar. Two day. It's free for everybody that owns the Investor's Toolkit. It's not Memorial Day? No, that's that's the week before. Okay, I'm gone. I, that, that week before, I'll be gone. Okay, no worries. All okay. right, so what's your tip of the week? Well, um, as I'm building out LandHub, um, there's a there's a platform which I, I still think is pretty neat. Um, I, I don't know if I've I don't know if it's been a tip of the week before or not, but it's called Animoto.com. Oh, sure. I, I you know what it, it may have been, but it's a great tip. Um, Animoto basically let's takes photos together. and creates videos. So it's a tool that we're creating within LandHub where it's going to take your listing and create a, basically create a video out of it. Um, w- but this is really cool because Animoto, you've got music and you can take your photos and create a cool little video. Obviously, uh, you know, it doesn't take a brain surgeon, uh, to figure out that, you know, we're moving in that direction of, of video. And I mean, we were already there, um, and, and that business can be done that way. So by right. creating videos for a particular parcel of land and, and it's a great way to market. Mark, Mark was doing this about seven years ago, but I, I'm pretty sure he still hasn't sold a piece of land by doing it. That's not true at all. <laughs> People love my videos. They love it. And I did use Animoto. Like I was like one of the first people jumping on the Animoto bandwagon. 
Well, I started the company, so you, I don't know if that's true. Of course but. you did. <laughs> 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 and uh, I know what, but I use iMovie now. It literally takes me about three minutes to make a movie. Yeah. All I do, I drag in the photos into iMovie. I add a, you know, a, not, a, not a copyrighted soundtrack, just one of their soundtracks that comes with like GarageBand. Yes. And add a few uh, titles, transitions. And it, I only have about a minute, minute and a half. And it's great. Throw yeah. it up on YouTube. Boom. Boom. Keywords. Tag, tag, tag it and you're good. Tag it. It's all about the keywords. Yeah. All right. So, Fantastic. And what Odo. You, what's your tip of the week, Mark? All right. Have we talked about postlets? Come on, Mark. Have we? Uh, probably not. I bet we have. I was on the mastermind yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, and someone was, you know, putting up their ad on postlets. And so I checked it out again. I haven't, I haven't done it in a while. I just use Craigslist. But Postlets syndicates it out to Zillow and Facebook and Craigslist and all these places, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's, it's great. And it's free. But when I started doing it, it for my uh, five-acre parcel in Colorado, uh -huh. it wanted a physical address. It literally wouldn't let me list it. So I got really kind of frustrated with it. But I'm going to give Postlets another chance if I can figure out how to get away from the uh, physical address aspect. Because some of these, you know, parcels, all you have is the legal. You don't have a physical address. And that's that's where Landhub comes in, baby. Landhub. Syndicate, syndicate, syndicate. Syndicate, syndicate, syndicate. All right, so, well, how, how do you feel about this podcast? Good? I, I, feel, I feel pretty confident, Mark, that people, that at least 50% of people will turn it off, but the other people, 50% 50, 50 of people will listen to it. That's... That's good. I'll, I'll take that. That's a good conversion. It's a good conversion, exactly. I mean, I may have to edit your beginning story. Kind of went long about Toronto. Dude, that's, come on. That's okay. Really? Yeah. I'll, I'll give it to you. Come on. You we'll can't edit it. that. That's a great story. I felt like I was detained in my own country. I think Actually, people, you know what? Pe people like the sound of your voice. It's okay. Okay. Thanks, buddy. All right, brother. So, hey, uh, let's do this again next week. You, you're going to be around? Uh, I don't think so, bud. You're not tra you're traveling? I might be traveling. All right, let me know. Keep in touch. All right. So listen, if you guys want to learn more tips, tricks, techniques on how to make an incredible Duran type of I want to live off the beach in Carlsbad, California type income, go to www.thelandgeek.com, download for free the passive income blueprint, get the ebook how to avoid the three fatal land buying mistakes, and of course, you get to listen to Duran's and mine's voice almost every week. Delivered to your email inbox, the Land Geek Podcast. And then look, go to reserveland.com, give Duran some love, check out landhub.com. You probably already just registered another domain for you to check out. So you can do that as well. And if Duran doesn't have any uh, wholesale land that you're interested in, go to frontierpropertiesusa.com. I guarantee I do. This is Mark Podolsky with Duran Frazier. Thanks again. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.